Hi, we are at SeaTac Airport. We, this is myself and Jerry. We are headed to Reagan National. I have my follow-up appointments for my surgery three months ago. I have von Willendau, a rare genetic disorder that causes tumors to grow in different parts of the body. Three months ago, I had surgery at the National Institutes of Health in Washington, D.C. to remove two cancerous tumors from my left kidney. And we have already had drama. Our flight was canceled. So they rebooked us on another flight and we're not staying together anymore. And maybe our meals were canceled. We don't know. Alright Jerry, we've made it everywhere we're supposed to be so far, but it seems like the rest of the transportation is not participating in our effort to try to get there on time. Nobody's participating in our plan. As a matter Done. of fact, I think they all had a meeting and figured out like everybody involved has to do one small thing to screw up the plan. Number one, our flight was canceled. We were booked six hours out. Number two, they booked and broke us up and they made us sit away from each other. Number three, they canceled our meals. Baggage was in the wrong car was on the wrong carousel. Everybody was all lemming it to try to figure out where their luggage was. And now we got here and the subway is not running on this track. It is running on that track because of construction and now they just announced that because of some investigation. Some accident investigation. An accident investigation that it will only come every half hour and our other subways only come here in 15 minutes. So it's cold, it's dark, and we're waiting outside for what was supposed to be a daytime flight. Whatever has been given us, we've figured it out, rescheduled everything, rebooked, re and got our butts in the right place at the right time. That hasn't been the issue. Subway. Or 1.30 our time. Yeah, 1.30 our time. And yet I was sleeping as if there was no time change. How you doing, hon? Tired. <laughs> yeah, we had like three hours of sleep. Had to rush up to building 10 to have my blood draw and my urine test to make sure I wasn't pregnant. Yeah. So, I don't know yet. Oh. I had to wait for it to come in to follow my health, their uh, patient portal. What will you name the baby? Miracle? <laughs> or <laughs> impossible? <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I understand. They just, they're not putting anybody in an MRI machine and full of contrast until they know if they're pregnant. I got it. I got it. Waiting. I'm supposed to be at MRI at 8.30 for a 9 o'clock MRI and that is all I have today. Yay! It was 29 degrees this morning. It's early and cold. Welcome to December at NIH. day off and we slept through it because of our blade flight and everything and today I have a renogram 
I don't remember what that is really, so I'm going to take you along so you can uh, see what it would be like if you have a renogram. So we got here a little early. I drank a whole water bottle because they said to drink plenty of water before the renogram. It's 2021. I don't know if the masks are permanent. This will remain to be seen. <laughs> All right, so here's the story in the scan. I got down there, they wanted me to fill out paperwork. It was three solid pages of paperwork, including every medication I'm taking, every surgery I've had like it's not all in the computer. It said on the form that you had to have drank 24 ounces. So he asked me, how much have you drank in the last 30 minutes? And I said, well, like 10 ounces. And he said, oh, okay. So we went and got a big paper cup and they have one of the water coolers in there, or a big plastic cup. And he says, you gotta drink two of these. I'm like, okay. So I start to drink and he goes, you can go sit down. I'm like, okay. So I went and sat down, drank another 14 or so ounces. I think 24 is what they were going for. Oh, and then he brought me back. He told me to empty my bladder. So I went to the restroom and then brought me back to the scan machine, laid me down, gave me an IV start. They did my left arm, which doesn't usually work. They got my left arm. I was plenty hydrated. So they put in, he puts in the isotope, the radioactive stuff, and then slides you into, slid me into the machine and then started Oh, and then it started to do its thing and he turned the screen down so I could see what it was doing. There's people. And so you could see, I'm going to show you an image. You can see your kidneys because they're glowing from the isotope and then it goes down into the bladder, which was glowing too. And I laid like that for 31 minutes. <laughs> it was so boring. Boring, boring, boring. And the tech sat there the whole time, but I don't, he wanted to chat, so he was working on the computer. Oh, and towards towards the middle, the doctor came in and looked over his shoulder and then left. They're looking for blockage, and they'll clear the blockage if they have to. They use something called Lasix to clear it, which is a um, diuretic, but I didn't need that. Then the doctor left, and after 30 minutes, it beeped like I was a cooked chicken. And I got to get off the table and go to the restroom because my bladder was very full by then. In fact, the tech said that he can't make it that far in that test. He has to get to the bathroom. He can't wait 30 minutes with 24 ounces of fluid. I came back from the restroom. He said he had to, oh, he had to scan me again. So he put me in the machine one more time for a one minute scan. He sent me to the waiting room with the IV still in my arm. So the doctor would come in and look at the final images and decide if he needed any more. And after the doctor did that, then the tech came out and got me and said he could take my IV out. Took me to another room to take the IV out and I was done. So all told with the paperwork and drinking water and getting the doctor, it was about, I think, an hour and 45 minutes, just about. So you know how much time to allow, if should you be in that position, getting a renogram. Uh, what did I think about it? My arm was really cold because it wasn't under the blanket, the one with the IV and the isotope was cold too, and the room was cold. So I was cold. <laughs> did I complain? No, because I wanted to get it over with and I was afraid of anything that might slow us down. Oh, he also gave me a card at the end that I can present at the airport if I go off in the security because I am radioactive. Did you have to ask for it? Yes, I did. I asked for it. <gasps> There's Jerry. I did ask for it. Okay, so that is what a renogram is like. It's a lot of holding your bladder and drinking a lot of water. It's not generally unpleasant. It's just the laying in the machine while well, nothing happens for 30 minutes. It's a long time. It was actually 31 minutes because I was counting it down. We are at urology and met with the physician's assistant and there. They wanted to schedule me for surgery on my right kidney. But I just started that medication, so we'll see what the plan is. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. How are things going? You're going fast. How's the Belzuda thing? 
shooting up. It's going okay, and it was Good. November 15th that I started. I said okay, so it's been about oh. I had to exactly like a month. four weeks. It's okay. so four weeks. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Good. Well, good. I yeah, I I'd forgotten that that was on the table. So when I was looking at the scans this morning, I thought, yeah, you know, we're probably thinking about surgery. You know, not right away, but sometime next year. Right. So hopefully we can expand that, extend yeah, that time a little bit. Thanks. Left kidney looks great. Left kidney, yeah. yeah. How did the surgery? How does all that look? And uh, we can't tell we were there. It's uh, it's healed really nicely. Good. Yeah. Well, good. I'm happy with where we are. Yeah, so we'll we'll too. plan on you know, we'll checking things out in May. Yeah. And kind of go from there. No, they had, to, they had to take it all out and everything like that. And we are back in Seattle. My flight was not canceled this time. No, it just could not read my e-ticket and I could not load it into my wallet and yeah, so I had to get it to reload. I got the email and I was able to use that to scan in to get into security. And then security was uh, boondog. Chaos. Chaos. It was chaos. It was something about TSA pre-check, but we don't have TSA pre-check, but the sign told us to do all the stuff that no, I didn't realize it was the TSA pre-check sign. And so then the guy wanted us to do more like, you couldn't have any food in your bag. Who doesn't have food in their bag? It was weird. He wouldn't let us put our, sh our shoes in the, um, in the basket. You had to put them on loose. I mean, just put them on the cart and hope they went through the x-ray machine. It was very weird. So by the time we went through the personal check, our stuff had all come out and was all backed up on the belt. Spread out. Spread out. My stuff was spread out about 10 feet apart. Yeah, and so <laughs> we went to collect our stuff and I hear Jerry <laughs> saying, who stole my bag? Where's my backpack? And I looked up to see if someone had taken his bag. He's like, it's not here. And what did the security agent say? Sir, it's on your back. He was holding it. I had already grabbed it. Oops. But so in then, chaos, I'm grabbing, yeah. trying to grab everything off of the And belt. there was nowhere to sit down and put everything back on. So we grabbed all of it up and scooped off and went to go find a place to sit down and got it all, all together. And then as we were walking, Jerry realized that he didn't get his jacket. Nope. So he had to go my pack. coat in the random pile of stuff the guy spread over the conveyor belt because I had it all on a bin. Yeah, <coughs> he dumped it all out. He dumped it all out and I spread it out. I don't know why, it was very weird. So yeah, so then Jerry. I'm gonna run back and get my coat from the same gal who let me know that I had my stolen backpack on my own back. Oops. And she got another laugh out of yes. me uh, screwing stuff up. So that was fun. That was fun. And then we find, we got to the gate and there was nowhere to sit. It was packed and there was nowhere to sit. So I saw an empty chair. I sat in it. Jerry was standing. And then the person who had been sitting in the chair came back. And it was my former co-worker's family. I knew that they might be at the airport. I, I, I did see that on Facebook, but I didn't know which airport. I didn't know if they'd be at Dulles, DCA, or, well, Reagan, or uh, BWI. Uh, they were on the same flight as us. So that was pretty and funny. And you stole their family seat. I, and I stole I think it was your son's seat. Yeah, but he refused to sit down. So I don't know what you're supposed to do then. Anyway, so we, I got to have a little reunion with one of my coworkers from when I had my job. And um, then, we went and found some random place to sit to wait. Well, the stewardess was having a little issue. Yeah, she was spilling on everybody. Spilled, spilled water all the way down the aisle, splashed it, got her coworker all wet, got some on me, and then 30 seconds later, spilled a cup of something on the lady across the aisle from me. I don't know what she spilled. I, Ended up giving her miles. I wonder if she used to see a doctor. If you suddenly start dropping everything and spilling everything, go to your doctor. You should probably have a neuro evaluation. I'm just having a bad day. Or, yeah, or that. And then, um, and then afterwards we went to get our luggage, only half of it came back. 
and we waited and waited and everybody waited and waited. So our luggage took a good 30, 45 minutes, which on Alaska, it's only supposed to take 20. So I don't know what went wrong and I didn't go track down how to get my free miles or whatever. Cause by then I just wanted my bag. Just let us go home. And now a bunch of lanes are closed. A bunch of construction on the freeway. We should have took four or five. How would I have known? We wouldn't know. And he got a really good coupon. Really good. It was was it was eighty dollars to park for the four days, and it dropped it down to fifty, right? Fifty one or something. Yeah, that was really good. Well, it's half price. Yeah. Roughly. So that worked out. And the gal was really nice. Yes, she was very kind. So that is the end of my DC follow up trip. So if you're counting, my left kidney from the surgery is doing great. However, the tumors on the right kidney continue to grow. He would have been scheduling surgery with me, but I started the medication, the Willigren, and so we're gonna see what it does first. I will be back there in May, we'll get new scans and decide if I need to schedule surgery or if the medication is working and slowing down the tumor growth. Because that's what I want is another surgery. Here are some more videos about travel and health stuff. And down here is a video that YouTube picked out just for you.